Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Charlian Forum. Uh, my name is Chris, and today, uh, you know, I'm working a lot on my newest Final Fantasy XI recap video, um, which is taking a lot longer than I thought. Uh, Seekers of Adeline is a huge expansion, so I just wanted to do a kind of a short and sweet video. Um, want to put some stuff out there while I'm doing this. It's just going to have to be shorter stuff because the script is taking forever. Um, but there's been a lot of discourse lately about the state of Dark Knight in Final Fantasy XIV. Um, you know, it, it, its position as a tank um, and, and how it fits into the role has been under a lot of scrutiny lately. And for good reason, I think that, um, you know, Dark Knight, when it was first introduced in Heavensward, was a extremely unique uh, tank experience compared to Paladin and Warrior, which were the only other tanks in the game at the time. Um, Dark Knight was introduced as this sort of magical tank, um, specifically because Paladin at that time could not block magic. There was no way for Paladin to reduce magic damage other than just flat damage reduction. Um, and Warrior, while it had its identity of being like a high health sort of region tank, it did not have as nearly as many tools as it has now. Um, so Dark Knight came in and was unbelievably powerful at first, um, just because of its ability to reduce so much of the magic damage in the game, which was a lot of the busters, obviously, in tank or in raid environments, and it, it maintains that identity to this day. But now it's become sort of a detriment almost, um, because the other tanks have so many new tools to deal with so many issues. Dark Knight is now in this spot where, yes, it can mitigate, mitigate magical damage, um, but the rest of its tools are fairly poor for dealing with a lot of the issues that the job has. Um, it's gotten a lot simpler to play since it's rework in Shadowbringers. Um, however, it did not get much to help it fix the biggest pain points of the job. Um, so let's jump in here. Um, one of the biggest complaints I think about Dark Knight is that outside of its burst window, it is easily the most boring tank in the entire game to play. Um, I mean, you, you literally have a 1-2-3 combo, and that's it. Um, and you could say that about the other tanks, of course, but, you know, with Gunbreaker, you're spending cartridges pretty consistently, even outside of your burst window, you're spending them to not cap, you're using your continuation combo, um, you're continuating, your continuation, pressing continuation on other skills, you know, you're constantly keeping this sort of flow going. Um, the one that I see people complain about the most is Paladin, how it ha also only has a 1-2-3 combo, um, but Paladin also gets a free Holy Spirit use after each combo, and it also has the uh, Royal Authority combo. Um, so it it's, it's very hard, I think, to justify. And of course, Warrior has so much going on. Warrior is just hitting... You know, it's got Storm's Eye, it's got Storm's Path, um, so you got two finishers, you've got... You know, in the same way that Dark Knight is building Gage and dumping blood spillers, you've got your fell cleaves. Um, so there's, it's almost like Dark Knight is sort of the conglomeration of all of the worst parts of every tank, and you put them together, and then you give them like a few really cool moves and a few really cool abilities, and then just leave the rest to rot. Um, and it's pretty unfortunate because I think that Dark Knight used to be really really fun to play in Heavensward. It was super cool and very unique, um, and now it while being unique, um, it doesn't feel very good to play. So there's a trade-off there, right? Um, so a lot of people have been talking about how to fix Dark Knight, um, you know, what the right answer is, and I'm not a game designer, so please take this with a grain of salt, but this is sort of the list of stuff that I've come up with that I would change personally, um, just things that I think would make Dark Knight a lot more fun. Um, so number one is to add a second combo finisher that buffs the heal on Soul Eater. Um, so I think that this is a huge one that a lot of people complain about. If we had another um, combo here, Dark Knight used to have, well, every tank really, used to have two complete three-part combos. They had a DPS combo and an enmity combo. So the enmity combo just helped generate extra enmity. Um, now that was before the enmity rework, so that's really not necessary anymore. However, repurposing those abilities into a different capacity for the job, I think would be really cool. So if we had another finisher, um, 
you know, power slash or, or whatever um, it was called that granted a buff to Soul Eater that increased the healing that you gain from it. Um, you know, if we, this is a 300 cure potency normally, if that buff boosted it to 500, 450 even, just another 150 potency, um, this single target healing by itself would make a massive difference for Dark Knight and would give it so much extra power um, and staying alive in dungeons, which is one of the biggest issues that Dark Knight has, is that it's fine in content where there's one target, but as soon as there's more than one target, it just does not have the healing to, to, to keep up. It struggles a lot in dungeons, and uh, a big part of that is Abyssal Drain, which I think, again, number two, uh, making Abyssal Drain separate from the Carbon Spit cooldown and also making it a short cast time with an MP cost, I think would be hugely beneficial for the game. Uh, for the state of Dark Knight, at least. Um, Abyssal Drain is a great ability. It heals the Dark Knight, and it's an AoE, and it does work on multiple targets, so you can get a huge heal if you hit it at the right time at the right place. Um, but single target, it's basically completely worthless. Um, it does not have enough healing built into it to make it worth pressing basically ever, um, unless it's just an absolute emergency situation in a single target fight, which is not very common. Um, so while it's good in AOE, it just doesn't function very well as a single target ability. And I think that giving it a higher heal and making it a ability that you can use on cooldown um, with just an MP cost similar to, um, Jesus, what is the Paladin heal called? Clemency, similar to Clemency. Um, you know, if it just had an MP cost and a cooldown similar to Clemency, I think that that would be cool. And you could even do something kind of like Clemency does, where executing Stalwart Soul will give you a free or instant use of Abyssal Drain. I think that that would be a great way to benefit Dark Knight a lot in AoE pulls and create just some extra and some extra healing for them in AoE situations, which could help them stay alive a lot. Um, Carve and Spit, I think, just needs to have more MP restored. Um, right now, it just, I think, does not restore enough MP, personally. Um, 600. I, I, I think that for a one-minute cooldown, to give you 600 MP is pretty ridiculous. I think that it's just not good. Uh, <laughs> you could double or triple that, and it would still be pretty low for a one-minute cooldown, I think, for a job that uses MP as much as Dark Knight does. Um, I just really don't know why this is only 600. It seems ridiculous to me. Um, TBN has been the uh, point of discussion for <laughs> years. Um, I think that TBN is in a pretty decent spot. I think that it's an awesome ability. It's a very unique tank mitigation ability um, in the fact that to get full value out of it, you kind of have to get hit. So you want to get hit, um, which is not something like other than like maybe Vengeance for Warrior is kind of like that. Um, but I think it would be really interesting, especially since TBN can be cast on other party members. If when, you know, number one, if TBN lasted just a little bit longer um, because it's really annoying playing a raid or something on Dark Knight you hit TBN to take a tank buster, and like right when you hit TBN, the Sage throws this massive shield on you, and you get hit, and TBN doesn't break, but the Sage shield does, and then TBN falls off, and then you get hit with an auto attack that would have broken TBN if it lasted for two more seconds. Um, and so you just lose the value there, which sucks. Um, and yeah, you can subvert that by being in an organized group that has you know blah 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 you know we can go off on that tangent but the reality is is that a lot of players in this game are not doing content like that they're pfing it they're pugging it they're going into queues um so just make tbn last 10 seconds instead of seven i think that that would basically solve a lot of the problems and again a way to increase benefit um you know give tbn a region um similar to uh paladin you know with holy sheltron make it less potent than that or more potent i'm not sure i think probably less potent is the right call there 
um, just a small regen, you know, just a little bit of extra health generation on Dark Knight, just to help it stay alive. Um, Dark Mind and Dark Missionary need to be changed. <laughs> um, Dark Might, Dark Mind only reducing magic damage is trash. That's objectively terrible. Um, this skill should just be given the faint slash addle treatment where it reduces magic damage by 20% and it reduces physical damage by 10% or some flip-flop of that, you know, 15, 5, whatever you want to do. Um, the fact that it's only magic damage is actively terrible um, because that just means that for fights like M3S where you have super heavy physical busters or heavy physical raid wides, Dark Knight literally can't do anything for you. Um, you know, you can pop you can pop TBN and you can throw ablation on two people and everybody else can just figure it out, um, which is just bad. Uh, sorry, it's not good. Um, I think the right choice is to do uh, magic 20, physical 10 on Dark Mind since it's single target and then uh, do missionary as 10 and 5. Um, so you at least get something out of it on physical busters. Um, you know, that way you maintain the identity of Dark Knight being a magical tank and quote unquote, but you get some value out of it. Um, Dark Missionary also needs to be level 70. I know that that's been talked about to death. Um, it's just correct. Um, having it be level 76 is not good. Um, it doesn't serve any purpose other than just to be this thing that's at the level 76 slot. Um, and it's it's just silly. There's not really a reason for it to be level 76 other than just there's nothing else they could have put in 76, I guess. Um, this is probably a hot take depending on who you ask, but I think that Edge of Shadow and Flood of Shadow uh, don't need to be two separate buttons. Uh, this is a Shoha Shoha 2 situation. Um, they cost the same amount of MP. They do the same thing. They both consume uh, Dark Side. Uh, they both give the same buff. Just one is AOE and one is single target. I think that that's needless button padding and that this should just get the Shoha treatment and just be Edge of Shadow or Flood of Shadow, whatever they want to call it. And it's just a uh, AOE with a high single target and fall off that gives you the buff and it uh, consumes Dark Side if you have it. Um, the fact that it's two separate buttons is silly and I, you can't convince me that I'm wrong. <laughs> um, so this is actually something, I, for anybody that doesn't know, I played a lot of WoW. Um, I played a lot of WoW before I played Final Fantasy. And even when I played Final Fantasy, there was a time where I was playing both at, uh, in tandem. Um, and I played a lot of Death Knight in, in World of Warcraft, which is sort of analogous to Dark Knight in a way. Um, and Death Knight in World of Warcraft has this ability called Death and Decay, and it's an area-dropped spell that puts a puddle out, and anybody standing inside of it deals damage and it gives the death knight some buffs does that sound familiar it probably should because it's basically the same thing as salted earth um so i think that salted earth is in a really interesting spot because it's a cool ability it's a unique thing that you can drop down and you can stand in it and it deals damage to enemies however it has zero benefit for the player um it's just damage it's basically just a dot um, that you can put on the ground. So that's cool, but it would be cooler if it did something for you. Um, so I think that a really interesting way to do that would be uh, to, when you're standing inside of your uh, salted earth, you get a buff that increases the amount of healing you receive. Um, so this could, again, be a huge boost to Dark Knight's uh, survivability, its solo survivability, and its ability to keep itself alive with its own self heals. Um, because you think about the fact that every single time you hit uh, Siphon Strike, or, or Soul Leader rather, sorry, um, you would get a boosted heal from it. Instead of just that flat heal, you'd get a boosted heal if you were standing inside of Salted Earth. You combine that with the buff from the fourth uh, finisher that I was talking about that would boost this as well. So you'd have two boosted buffs on Soul Eater and you could double or triple this amount of healing received and it would be huge. Um, that would be a massive change for Dark Knight. That's very simple, something that they already know how to do because Ninja has a, um, 
an interaction with uh, what is it called? Ninja has this interaction with Dotan, where when you hit your Hake Mujin Satsu inside of it, you get that extra damage from the snakes, right? That pop up and deal um, increased damage. And so it's something as simple as just a flag that you know we have on Ninja, where Dotan is cast, and as long as you have that, if you hit this thing, you get a bonus, right? So there's clearly architecture in place for a system like this. Um, to me, there's not really an excuse for Salted Earth to just do nothing. I think that it needs to provide a benefit for the player. Um, in that same vein, I think that um, since uh, uh, Salted Earth leads into Salt and Darkness, I think it would be really cool as a way to just give that ability some extra value if when you activated Salt and Darkness, it consumed the buff that was on you from Salted Earth and it dealt damage and healed you based on how long that buff had, um, a la Lily Bell or Haima. Um, so just a cool way to sort of add some flavor to those two abilities, because right now it's sort of just you press it and then you press the other one and that's all that happens. Um, and it's not that interesting. So last thing, um, I think that Living Dead needs another rework. Um, I think that Living Dead functions right now. It's fine. Um, but I think that it's just not a very cool ability. Um, it's pretty boring. It doesn't leave much room for skill expression. Um, it's very easy to cheese it. And I think that unfortunately, this ability just will not ever work in the way that it's currently designed. Um, and I think that a better way to do it, a more interesting way to do it, would be something like this. Um, so when you press Living Dead, your HP gets set to one. You could even set this to zero if you really wanted to, but I don't know how they would work that out with a death flag. So I think just setting it to one is probably the easier option. And it would make you invulnerable to damage while you have it. And it would prevent the restoration of HP from any source other than the Dark Knight. So you cannot press this and just get uh, just get benedictioned and it goes away in your phone, right? So you have this skill expression thing that happens immediately by just making that a simple choice and keep the idea where whenever you hit a weapon skill, although I, I hazard to say that this should just be abilities, not weapon skills, because not getting HP back in an H, um, AOE pull from... Uh, stalwart soul feels like shit <laughs> so it should probably just be abilities or weapon skills and spells or you know however they want to figure that out um, but make it so that executing anything under living dead restores your HP and it, you need to boost the 1500 I think the 1500 is too low um, and then when you reach max, max HP you're granted undead rebirth which is what it does now and once you get Undead Rebirth, it lasts for as long as the remaining debuff for Living Dead would have lasted. Um, and that gives you a regen and a damage reduction. Um, I think that just making it not f making it so that Undead Rebirth not will not allow your HP to f fall below one like it does now. Um, it's not very interesting. It's boring. It also means that this could wear off and you have one HP and then you just get one-shotted by something. So it's like, what did this really do other than just delay my death by 10 seconds? Um, it's, it's just kind of boring. I think that there's not much expression there. Um, and of course, like in my scenario, you would just get a damage reduction and a regen. So you'd hit full health. And then as soon as you hit full health, it would flip over you'd get that damage reduction instantly, you'd get that region instantly, and you would have that damage reduction and region for the duration of the effect, right? So this means you can still die, <laughs> you know, like if you pop this and you get to full health and then you get hit by a tank buster with a bunch of debuffs on you and you get creamed, then you're dead, you know? 
So it doesn't necessarily make you invincible for 10 seconds, but it does just give you an opportunity to get your feet back under yourself. And it makes you invincible for as long as you have living dead, which could potentially be a 15 second delay or 10 second delay, whatever you want to say. Um, and I think that this is cool because it's sort of like a, it's almost like a max health doom timer on dark Knight, which I think feels very thematic. Um, you could even have a countdown over your head as a, like a cool, like an hourglass, like draining, you know, um, there's just a lot of really cool ways to do this. And it also sort of forces players to interact with the ability as opposed to just pressing it and letting somebody else fix it for you. Um, which I think is the issue with living dead right now. And it would force this expression and kind of keep the identity of this like absorption tank, right? Because that's, I think what they're kind of going for with Dark Knight is that it's this like magical blood absorption vampire-esque tank um, that keeps itself alive by draining enemies, right? But the issue is, is that none of the skills actually reflect that. <laughs> like the only thing that reflects that is Abyssal Drain, which is an absolutely doo-doo ability as we've discussed um so yeah i mean i think that dark knight is it has the potential to be really great it could be a really awesome job it just needs some changes um it needs some mp economy changes i think that again like having edge and flood be two separate abilities is silly i think that you're punished pretty heavily with the way that TBN works, if you don't get the full value out of it, Edge of Shadow, and like, that's fine. But, you know, maybe make it, if this is one ability and the MP cost is lower, that also means that the job is a little busier. You get a little bit more usage out of it. So your usage goes up on that skill per minute, um, which can help alleviate some of the boring aspects of the job, I think. Um, I love Disesteem. I think Disesteem is a great button. Um, so, I mean, they did some cool stuff with Dark Knight. It's an interesting job. I like the new Delirium combo. I don't know. I, I just, I, I think that there's, there's just some stuff that needs to change and uh, it would be better for it. So that's my thoughts. Um, you know, there's a lot of discourse surrounding Dark Knight right now. A lot of people are throwing their hats into the ring and um, just thought I'd do the same while I'm working on this script. So let me know what you think. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye.